I found it, the greatest treasure in all of Wakanda. No, it's not the rare metal vibranium, nor is it the mysterious heart-shaped herb. It is a treasured tome of the most prized, most celebrated, most delicious recipes in all of Wakanda, and now I get to share it with you. Return what you have stolen, or I will take it with blood. It belongs to Wakanda. Uh-oh, before I get my face clawed off, I better go ahead and show you guys Black Panther, the official Wakanda cookbook. Wakanda has always been super secretive and they've cut themselves off to the world for many years, but today we get to have a sneak peek into their culture through food in Black Panther, the official Wakanda cookbook. The 70 plus recipes in this book by Nyanyika Banda are inspired by over 50 years of Black Panther comics, which is crazy to me because I didn't even know Black Panther has been around that long. The cookbook is told from the perspective of Indi Chikondi, the executive chef of the Royal Palace of Wakanda, home to the Black Panther himself. This is a collection of Wakanda's most loved dishes, with many recipes passed down through generations of his family who were all excellent cooks. Aside from the traditional dishes, there are also recipes of Wakandan street food and even some recipes inspired by Chef Chikondi's travels. I was really excited to try this cookbook because I feel like I have so much to learn about food from African countries, and I feel like a lot of their flavor profiles would be right up my alley. I feel that a lot of African cuisines are really underrepresented in cookbooks, so it's cool to see a cookbook like this one that showcases a lot of that. The food photos look warm and inviting, but unfortunately there are a lot of recipes that don't come with a photo, and you already know how I feel about that. But to make up for it, there are a lot of Black Panther illustrations scattered throughout the recipe pages, which helps visually tie everything back to the comics. As mentioned before, the recipes are heavily inspired by African and Caribbean cuisines. Lots of interesting and tasty looking dishes here. All of the recipes are pretty grounded and based on traditional already existing dishes, but I was also hoping to see some more out of the box recipes that showcase the unique qualities of Wakanda, like maybe it's unique resources or advanced technology. There's not really a recipe in here that you can look at and tell that it's uniquely Black Panther. Anyway, I've been Wakanda forever talking, now it's time to get to cooking. We're gonna make three dishes from the Wakanda cookbook to create a meal fit for a king. We start in the bustling market of Wakanda to try a beloved street food, glazed roadrunner wings. Roadrunners is a term that they use for chickens that are free range and organic, but before we get to the chicken, we must first make a brine. Using a small saucepan, mix together a quarter cup of salt with two cups of water. Heat this to a boil until the salt is completely dissolved. When done, transfer it all to a pitcher and add in another two cups of cold water. Now let's take one and a half pounds of chicken, aka Roadrunner wings, place them in a container pan or dish and pour on the brine to cover it all. Pop these brined wings in the fridge for 30 minutes. When done, take all the wings out of the brine and pat them dry. We want them nice and dry before frying. Using a cast iron skillet, heat up two inches worth of vegetable oil. When you start to hear the oil pop, Place in the wings one at a time in the skillet and cook these wings until they've browned, which will take about 10 minutes. While the chicken is drying, I'm gonna quickly make the sauce, which is this delicious sounding mango ginger sauce. In a small saucepan, mix together two tablespoons of cornstarch with a cup of mango juice until the cornstarch is fully dissolved. Then add in three cloves of minced garlic, one tablespoon of minced ginger, and bring the heat up to medium high, Whisk occasionally for two minutes and that sauce will start to turn translucent. At this point, add in two teaspoons of tomato paste. Then if you want an added kick, sprinkle on two pinches of crushed red pepper, but this is optional and completely up to you. Add salt and pepper to taste. Continue to whisk and let this cook for another three minutes until thick and shiny. Now let's make some magic happen by combining those Roadrunner wings with about a half cup of the mango ginger sauce and that right there is your glazed Roadrunner wings. Cannot wait to bite into these. Next up is a Caribbean inspired dish highly recommended by the Dora Milaje. Let's make some sweet and spicy oxtail with cassava dumplings. This recipe was the one that got the most votes in my Patreon poll. If you want to be able to vote for the cookbooks and recipes that I'm going to do next and help the channel out, then I invite you to check out the Patreon. Thanks for your support. For this, we're going to need a pound of oxtail, which we're going to season with some salt and pepper. If oxtail ain't your jam or you just can't find any, the cookbook suggests beef shanks as a replacement. Then heat up a tablespoon of vegetable oil in a medium braising pot over medium high heat and add in the oxtail. Cook each side for about a minute each until the oxtail is brown all around. Then remove from the pot and we'll set this aside for later. 
in that same pot add in two sliced up yellow onions two diced medium bell peppers six cloves of minced garlic and two bird's eye chilies fry these up for about 10 minutes until they're well caramelized then add in a tablespoon of tomato paste five curry leaves two teaspoons of ground turmeric and two sprigs of oregano right now the smell is absolutely intoxicating then we're gonna bring the oxtail back into the party and bathe everything with three cups of vegetable stock and a cup of mango juice for some sweet goodness. Cover the pot and let it all simmer on low heat for at least three hours. While we wait on that, let's go make some dumplings. Take a medium bowl for mixing and add in a cup of cassava flour. You can also use tapioca flour, but it'll make the dumplings a bit denser. Add to that a tablespoon of cornmeal, half a teaspoon of salt with three quarter cup of water. Then you're supposed to knead this all, but yeah, I, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that. It looks like Namor paid us a visit because this is a watery mess, y'all. I think I made a rookie dumpling mistake by chucking all the water in at once, so let's restart this, but this time I'll exercise some patience and I'll be adding the water in a bit at a time. It's working better, but man, is this cassava flour hard to control or what? It's hard to find the balance between too much water and too little. This is honestly one of the weirdest ingredients I've had to work with. When you press it together, it thickens hard like cement, but when you loose, it just straight up liquefies. This is some Scarlet Witch levels of dark magic. What is going on? Guys, I honestly don't know how to fix this thing. At this point, I'm thinking of just calling it quits and just eating this with rice, but that's not the Black Panther way. After all, if the Avengers gave up, there would only be half of you guys watching, which sucks. So I fixed it the way I know how, by adding regular flour. Thankfully, that kind of stabilized the dough and it started to behave, I expect dough to behave. It probably won't taste the same as intended, but better than nothing. Take this dough and cut it into quarters and take each quarter and roll it out into a long strand. Cut that up into little pieces, then add these dumpling pieces into the stew and let it cook for 20 minutes. Hey, this is actually looking pretty mighty tasty and it smells amazing. Sweet and spicy oxtail with cassava dumplings. Speaking of sweet, let's prepare our dessert as we make this dense and creamy cake called basbusa. In a bowl, we're going to prep our wet ingredients. That is one cup of sugar, two eggs, a quarter cup of whole milk, one cup of heavy cream, and a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now that we got our wet mixture, let's put together the dry ingredients. Mix together one and three quarter cups of cassava flour. Uh oh, not this again. Add in half a cup of dried unsweetened coconut flakes and a teaspoon of baking powder, then combine the mixture, eight tablespoons of melted unsalted butter and the dry stuff and make sure everything is well combined. Pour this batter out into a baking pan and pop this in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes or until the cake is golden brown on top. While we wait for that, let's prepare the syrup. In a small saucepan, combine a half cup of water and a cup of sugar and bring this to a boil let it simmer for a couple minutes until the sugar is fully dissolved then remove it from the heat and add in a half tablespoon of rose water also add in juice from half a lemon let's cut up our basbusa into squares and when you're ready to eat them coat them with some of the syrup and some chopped pistachios and here we have our sweet cakey and gluten-free dessert yes i'm so excited to try all these i got a good feeling it's been so long since I had wings, so I hope these glazed Roadrunner wings are going to hit the spot. And let me tell you, that sauce is super nice. The spicy pepperiness of the ginger and the red pepper flakes is balanced with the sweetness of the mango. The sauce is super sticky and messy, which is exactly what I want from a wing. I was surprised by how much the saltiness from the brine penetrated into the meat, but it's the perfect amount of saltiness. It wasn't as crispy as I'd like it to be though. Maybe I should have let it dry longer or cook it in the oil for a bit more or added baking powder, but still very enjoyable and I'll happily eat a whole plate of these. Off to a good start. I cannot wait any longer. I gotta dig into this sweet and spicy oxtail. Whoa, super tender and slow cooked to perfection. The meat just melts in your mouth and absorbed all those saucy flavors after all those hours in the pot. The sauce is absolutely killer. The combination of herbs and spices are very aromatic yet not overpowering. It's definitely got a kick as the bird's eye chilies pretty much dissolved into the sauce, but the sweetness from the mango juice helps. The dumplings surprisingly turned out pretty great. It's got that gummy texture from the cassava flour, but it definitely does taste a bit doughy because I added the regular flour. I wonder how it's supposed to taste like with just the cassava flour. Pretty awesome consistency though, and it sops up the sauce very well. 
I would definitely make this dish again. This recipe is a keeper, bones and all. Let's go to the basbusa, shall we? Folks, we are three for three, because this one is also delicious. I love the gummy mochi-like texture of the cassava. It really works well with the crunch of the pistachio. The rose syrup easily absorbs into the cake, and it's so floral and sweet and heavenly. This would be awesome with orange blossom syrup as well. The cake is creamy and milky, and you can even get an itty bitty hint of crunch from the coconut flakes. Very curious to know how it would taste like if I used semolina flour instead of cassava, since I had a bit of a hard time finding the cassava flour. But my local Asian grocery store came through in the clutch as usual. Damn, this was a pretty good three course meal. You got it pretty good, King T'Challa. Final verdict for the Black Panther cookbook flavors are marvelous.